What do Pringles have to do with implants? A lot more than you think. In today's video, we'll be talking about bone level. If you're a dentist, you hear this all the time. Especially when comparing success and failures, people often ask, were you at the level of the bone? Were you above the bone? Were you below the bone? This verbiage has even made its way into many research papers. Here's the thing. I have a big problem with the phrase bone level. This is why. When we're placing a single implant, what does the bone look like on top of a ridge? Is it flat? Not unless your patient has some really uncommon genes. And unless you run the bone for a full arch case, almost all bone is far from level. This is where Pringles come in. I can't eat this. I'm training for an Iron Man. It's one chip. In math and engineering, a Pringle shape is what we'd call a saddle point. <laughs> this is exactly what it sounds like, a shape that looks like a saddle. As we can see here, a saddle is concave along one axis, while it is convex along the other. These two curvatures intersect to form a distinct saddle point shape that we see in Pringles. Why does any of this matter? Because extraction sockets usually look like Pringles. They're saddle points. You can see the shape here. In this direction, mesial distal, we have our concave curvature. Along this axis, from facial to lingual, we have our convex curvature. Adding to our complexity, the bone is typically higher on the lingual and lower on the facial. Looking at this image, where is the level of the bone? There is no level. The bone isn't level. Why does this matter? Because there are some very prevalent ideas in the implant world that are based around the concept of bone level. Yet the entire basis for those ideas is flawed. Bone level doesn't exist. I was recently asked, Dr. Stanley, when you place an implant, will you please record where you place it? Subcrestal, supercrestal, or crestal? I now have to respond to the company and say, I don't understand your question. To explore why I said that, let's place an implant in this saddle point. If I place this implant so that the bone on the mesial is at the level of the implant and the bone on the distal is at the level of the implant, you might be inclined to say that this is at the bone level. However, we know that the bone on the facial is lower. That means that the part of the implant on the facial is supercrestal. But if we look at the lingual, the top of the implant is subcrestal. It's below the bone. So you tell me, where is the implant placed? Is it subcrestal, supercrestal, or crestal? Even if the patient lost multiple teeth and the mesial distal curve disappears, you still have the facial lingual curve. The bone isn't level. Let's look at a real case example. Here, I'm in three shape, looking at a case plan for a single implant. Take a look at the bone on the lingual side here. It's three millimeters above the top of the implant. On the distal, the bone is at the level of the implant. On the mesial, the bone starts out even with the top of the implant, but immediately runs up. And yet, on the facial, there's a good millimeter and a half of implant supercrestal. You can see it sticking up from the bone. This is a pretty typical scenario when placing implants in the posterior. You've got some asymmetrical healing on the ridge right here, plus this blowout from a previous extraction. This all seems pretty obvious, right? So why is it that so many people get it wrong? Why do people still ask about the level of the bone when it's clearly not a real world concept? Well, a lot of it comes down to people not using modern technology. And I think not wanting to question the traditional thinking that bone level is an accurate quantifiable measure. From the technology side, it's easy to see why this mistake might be made. If I show you this radiograph taken from the front, check out this implant. If you just look at this radiograph, you might be inclined to say it was placed supercrestal above the bone. But does a two-dimensional radiograph provide the same amount of data as a 3D scan? Of course not. If we look at this patient's 3D data, we can clearly see that the bone isn't level at all. Remember, the lingual bone is typically higher, which means that if we're just using a two-dimensional radiograph, like a PA or a bite wing, our bone is almost always going to look level, even if it drops several millimeters from the lingual to facial. Use your 3D data and you'll very easily see that the bone level is pretty much a convenient myth. Why am I telling you this? Why is this important? Because entire etiologies in dentistry are based on the concept of bone level. I'm cautioning you to approach those ideas with skepticism. Bone level isn't a real life concept. 